getting everything set up in Streamlabs OBS can be pretty confusing. And streaming isn't meant to be confusing. It is meant to be fun, right? Today, you'll go from having absolutely nothing set up to having this awesome overlay set up, as well as understanding how to add, customize, and edit every single thing you need and want inside Streamlabs OBS. Let's go. Not only are you going to go from an absolute beginner who knows nothing about Streamlabs OBS today and become an absolute pro, but I'm also going to sneak in a bunch of small little tips that you probably don't know about that are going to blow your mind. I'll be covering every single step you need, but most importantly, I'll also be referencing a playlist that is in my description. You see, Streamlabs OBS is incredibly complex at the end of the day, and if you want to learn how to deep dive into things like stream labels, alerts, and all those things, well, don't worry, you'll get a beginner's understanding today, and then when you're ready to deep dive, you can check out the playlist in the description. There are also time codes in the description so you can skip ahead to whatever section you're specifically trying to set up and get it running. But most importantly, in the description is a link to our sponsor, Own.TV. Own.TV are a massive supporter of this channel, but most importantly, they are a huge supporter when it comes to streaming. They are your one-stop shop for all things stream resources. Whether you're looking for a full stream package, emotes, sound alerts, or anything else you might need, they have it. But the best part is they've turned installation into an art. If you are a beginner and you're using Streamlabs OBS, well, then you can go over to own.tv, grab one of their full stream packages, and literally the installation process is a few clicks. So if you want to support me, guys, go and support Owned with the link in the description. Get yourself set up with a full animated or static overlay pack, and then you can come back and use this video to completely edit and customize the entire thing. So let's get into the nitty gritty of setting up Streamlabs OBS for an absolute beginner. When you first install Streamlabs, you'll most likely have either a blank slate or you may have already taken a few steps ahead and installed a template overlay. For this, I wanna make sure that everyone is working from a blank slate. So what we're gonna do is come down to the bottom left, click this little drop down as shown on screen, click manage all, and then once it opens, click create new. This will add a whole new blank Streamlabs setup. Now, don't worry if you did set up a template, it is not completely gone. If you want to swap back, go to the same process, but don't click new. Instead, click the overlay that you were on originally. Okay, let's give you a quick tour of Streamlabs OBS, and then I'll deep dive into everything. But first, you need to know your way around. In the middle, you have your display window. This is what you'd be broadcasting to Twitch if you were live, or if you were recording, this is what you'd be recording. If we look below our display, we also have our event feed. This shows when people follow, sub, or any other actions such as raids, hosts, or if you have Streamlabs donations set up, this is also where those will appear. Below that, we have three boxes. On the far left, we have scenes. You'll set up different scenes for different reasons. For example, you'll need a scene for gaming, a scene for going to be right back, or a scene for just chatting to your viewers. If we had those three scenes I just mentioned already set up and we click between them, then we would actually be transitioning between the scenes. In the middle, we have sources. These are the assets you have added to the scene. You've got selected on the left. And on the right, we have the mixer. These are your audio sources that will be transmitted out. You can also control and edit the audio of those sources from here. Now, don't worry. I know that sounds like a lot to take in. I'll be deep diving into every single one of these boxes throughout the video. First, you just need to know what is what so you can actually find them when I mention them. If we go further to the right and then up to the middle, you can click on this little arrow here, which opens up your chat, meaning you're able to read anything that comes into your Twitch chat while you are live or just in general while you have this open. So now you know where everything on the basic tour is. I will also mention though that if you're struggling to learn how to get your settings correct and make sure your stream is crystal clear and not laggy, then I really recommend the playlist in the description because it has a video there all about streaming settings and all about how to diagnose why you might be lagging or why you might not have the perfect quality for your stream. So I'm going to show you how to install this entire overlay in less than six clicks. But first, we need to start at the very basics so you guys can understand how to edit and customize things by yourself later. As I said, on the left, we have our scene list. I also mentioned that you'll be making scenes for different purposes. For example, let's start out with a game scene. Now, you should already have a default scene set up. You can right click it and rename it to the game scene. Now, I might be setting up a game scene, but I'll cover everything you need to know to build any scene you want. Now that we've renamed this to game scene, in the middle, we have our sources. Sources are all the media that are inside this particular scene. Right now, it is empty, but if we click this plus sign here at the top, we can add sources such as a game capture. You'll need a game capture in your gaming scene because that lets you actually capture your game and display it in Streamlabs OBS. There are other types of capture such as window and desktop, but most of the time you're best starting out and learning how game capture works. Anything you wanna add, you'll do it with this plus sign. This could be video graphics or it could be still images or it could be any of the dozens of built-in widgets that come with Streamlabs OBS. For example, we also wanna add alerts. So if someone follows while you're live, an alert plays on screen. 
So we hit the plus and add an alert box. Your alert box will come with default alerts or if you've already installed something, those will be what shows up here. But if you want to learn how to make alerts and how to use the alert box perfectly, I have that playlist in the description, which actually has a full deep dive in how to set up Streamlabs alerts. Your game scene will also need a webcam, most likely, maybe some support bars for latest follower or subscriber, and potentially you'll want to add your chat on screen as well. So let's start by adding a webcam. We click on the plus and we click video capture device. We'll select our webcam. And if we make sure we have it selected in the source scene, we'll be able to resize it down. Now the source list isn't actually a random order. It is actually a list from top to bottom. Imagine the bottom of that list is actually behind everything else in 3D space. So if we were to drag our webcam down below our game capture, it would then be hidden. This means that anything you want to be at the top above everything else should be dragged higher in the list. Now, I want to add support bars so that when someone follows me, their name is on screen as my latest follower. This means that people might follow just to have their name on screen for a little bit longer. We're going to do this by adding support bar graphics. All of the graphics I show in today's video are completely free from the Stream Scheme Discord. All you have to do, head down to the description, join, verify yourself, and you can start downloading them and follow along exactly the same as what I do. So how do we add things to our sources? Well, we go up here and we click the plus sign. Now I can either click add image if my support bar graphic isn't animated, or I can click a media source if my support bars are an animation. My support bars are in fact animated, so I will click media source. I'll find my animated bars from my computer and I will add them in. Since they are animated, I also need to make sure I double click my support bar source so the settings open up and I click on loop or else it will stop playing after the animation is finished. Any animation that you want to continue playing on your screen needs to have loop turned on. That process I just showed you of clicking plus and adding something is the same process you'll use to add any media source or any image you want to your screen. So let's go ahead and add our webcam frame in and get that all lined up with our webcam. Next, obviously we need our support bars to actually have the follower name on them. And we also need to have the latest follower there so people know what the name is about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head up here to the plus again and we're gonna add a stream label. Once the stream label opens, I will click on the drop down. I will search for recent follower. Here I can change the size, the font, and I can edit pretty much everything I want. Now I'm gonna increase the font size to max and then size down my new stream label so it fits inside my bar. The reason I choose to go to max in font size and scale down is because it will be a lot less pixelated. I see a lot of people dragging to stretch things up rather than increasing the font size. Always increase your font size and scale down rather than have a low font size and scale up. Stream labels are simple to add, but incredibly complex and powerful when you get into the nitty gritty. That's why if you want to, in the playlist I have mentioned in the description multiple times now, there is a video that is seven minutes long, which will take you from beginner with stream labels to a complete and utter pro. This video would go on for far too long if I deep dived into everything to do with stream labels. Now let's also add in the text to show people what that name is, because right now it just has my latest follower's name. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head back to that plus, add a source and add a text GDI plus. And I'm going to type in, I want to say new follower. I'll increase the font size again and scale it down to fit next to it. And voila, we have got our new follower and we also have our follower name appearing in our bar. Now, what if I don't like my support bars being at the top of my screen and I actually want them to be at the bottom of my screen? Well, I could individually click them and drag them all down and align them again, but that is a bit of a pain. So instead, if I wanted to, I could come down to my source list. I could click on the text hold shift and then click on the media source and this will select everything between those two sources. Now I can click on any of the images inside and drag them down to the bottom. But a much easier way to do this is to instead select the folder button above sources and drag all of the sources into one folder named support bars. While we're at it, let's also go ahead and add our webcam frame and our webcam into a folder of their own as well. Now we do hit a small snag here. Depending on your support graphics, you might have three or four more blank spaces you need to fill. And now you could do the exact same process I showed you with stream labels, but rather than add follower, you could add it as subscriber or whatever else you wanted. Or if you're just starting out and you just want to focus on followers, then you can go ahead and crop out the rest of them. If we select the support bars folder, it'll select everything in there. And now we're going to hold down alt and we're going to drag from right to left and it will start cropping. If you want to, you can also crop from top to bottom, but in this case, we do just want to crop off the extra three support bars. This alt and drag also works for resizing your webcam when you're trying to fit it into a 4.3 box, because sometimes having a big 16.9, a widescreen webcam takes up too much space on your game screen. 
If we follow the process we showed earlier and we import a square graphic for a webcam frame, then we're going to be able to lay it over the top of our webcam and we can hold alt and we can drag the webcam to be smaller and fit the box. Now, the last step of our gaming scene is maybe you'd like to add a chat box to the screen so that when people talk in your chat, they also appear on screen. To do this, let's head back in and hit the plus sign and then we're going to add a chat box widget. Now, you'll probably have the default chat box set up most likely. And when you add a chat box widget, it will be square. At the top left of the properties, when you double click on your chat box in the source list, you can actually change the height and width. Start by changing this to 1080 by 1920 and then resizing it. If that's too long for you, you can obviously crop or, or you can adjust those properties yourself to try and get a better fit for what you're trying to put it in. While we still have the chat box properties open, we can also turn on emotes and badges to appear in screen. Now let's put this chat box over here next to our camera and our followers type something to test and make sure that your chat box is actually below your camera in the source list, but above your game scene. Congratulations, you pretty much understand the basics to getting all of this set up and you have a game scene set up now. But first we need to go ahead and add a just chatting scene, which I think that every single creator should have a just chatting scene set up for connecting one-to-one -one with their audience. To add a new scene, we're gonna hit the plus above the scenes list. We're gonna name it just chatting and hit okay. And holy crap, all of the work we just did is suddenly gone. No, have no fear. If you click on the game scene, it will transition you back to the other scene where you had all your work. A small safety tip for people, if you're going to transition to a scene that shows your desktop or your browsers or anything like that, or you just don't want to have to transition every time you click on a different scene, then I recommend turning on studio mode. Studio mode can be turned on if you go down to this little button in the bottom left here. So now when I click on the game scene, it won't instantly transition me. Instead, it will show me what I've clicked on and I can click transition to move between. And if I do it the opposite way, it is the exact same. Now you can go ahead and set up your just chatting scene however you want, but I do have a few recommendations. For example, I do really think you should make a large full screen camera or at least a decent size of the screen as your camera. I also recommend you should add your chat to it and you should add your own support bars if that is the kind of thing you're looking to do. Obviously, you'll also want to add an alert box. Now, when you're adding a lot of these widgets and a lot of these sources, you're going to follow the steps that I showed you earlier where you click plus and then you go and select the widgets. And when you do that, it's actually going to say, do you want to add your alert box you've already added to a different scene or do you want to create a whole new alert box? Now, I recommend just sticking with having the exact same one in every scene for now. But again, there's that guide in the description if you want to get down and figure out exactly how to make everything work. Once you have all that set up, one of the fastest and easiest ways to add some polish and production value to your stream is to set up transitions and really make them fancy. Let's quickly add some transitions to our overlay. And then I'm going to show you guys how to install our full free templates so you don't have to worry about any of this. And of course, how to set up all your audio. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the cog wheel above the scenes list, click add transition, change it to a stinger, and then import your video file that you want to use as your stinger. Now you'll want to be using a WebM video stinger because this means you'll have transparency. Now you'll want to change time to frame. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set your transition point to whatever the frame is that your screen is completely covered. For me, 30 frames is when my screen is completely covered. So I'm going to hit 30. Now, what I want you to do is you should type 30 in. And if it's too early or too late, you can adjust what your frame transition will be until it is correct. Once it's correct, hit done. Now select the new stinger as your default with this circle, hit done. Click on the just chatting scene or the game scene, whichever one you had up, and you'll see that it plays the transition. Now I actually have a video that shows off 30 plus free transitions that you guys can download and try out for your stream. And it also has a deep dive into really polishing your transitions and really polishing those stingers to make them as fancy as possible. So if you want, link in the description in that playlist. Oh, LJ, this has all been so much work. I know it is actually a heck of a lot of work to get all this set up by hand and we're barely even actually digging deep into all of it. So why don't we just set up a template for you guys so you can just go ahead and delete anything you don't want rather than having to set up everything you do want. The first thing you want to do is get your hands on a dot overlay, whether it's a paid one from own.tv or one of the free animated ones from our Discord linked in the description. It doesn't really matter. Once you have your dot overlay, you're going to head down to the cog wheel in the bottom left. Click on scene collection, click on import overlay and select your dot overlay file from wherever it is on your computer. This will generate a whole new list of scenes with all of their sources set up and organized into folders. It has a lot of different options to choose from and anything you want to edit or customize, you can just double click on. Now I will throw it out there. Any animated text can't be edited, 
which means that you can change your stream labels that are already custom built in for you, but you won't be able to change anything with big animations included. Now with overlays like this, you will need to follow the steps I showed you earlier in the video to add a game capture, your alerts, your chat box, and any other widgets you want to use, because sadly with Streamlabs, we can't template in widgets to your overlays. If you need any further help with setting up your overlays, alerts, or any of that stuff, as I said, there is the playlist in the description, as well as a giant FAQ inside our Discord and 43,000 members there who can all help you get set up and get going. That's all of our visuals though. And while visuals are pretty important, actually at the end of the day, it's your audio and your sound that is the most important when it comes to getting a stream crisp and clean. So let's cover how to get your audio mixer all set up and good to go. Now, if we select our game scene or anything that has any animated files or media sources in them, well then Streamlabs is going to assume there is audio with that as well. And if we look on the right to our mixer, they're going to be included in our source list. Now, we only really want to focus on two of these sources, our mic slash aux source and our desktop audio source. I want you to click the cogwheel in the top right of your mixer. This will open up your advanced settings. And first thing we have to do is hide anything that isn't one of those sources, as I mentioned. You'll do this by clicking the hide in mixer box. Let's click on the settings cogwheel in the bottom left of Streamlabs OBS. And if we look over here on the side, you'll see audio. I want you to click on this audio section and I want you to click on your mic aux one and select your microphone input, whatever that might be called. Now they're all named differently, but it should say your brand name. For example, mine is my broadcast stream mix from my GoXLR. Be careful not to leave this as a webcam or something else that could be picking up audio or else it's going to start sounding terrible. Make sure it is the correct microphone by usually clicking or tapping on the end of your microphone without a noise gate on it. You'll probably also want to make sure that your desktop audio device is set up and set to default. Now, if we go back to our mixer and if we talk into the mic, it is being picked up by these bars. Now, your bars for the microphone should be hitting into your yellow. If they start hitting red, I recommend lowering them down just slightly because once they're in red, there's not much room for if you start yelling without it cutting off the audio and distorting it to sound terrible. Now, any audio that plays through your computer will actually be picked up by your desktop audio. And that is what we can see here. So if we're playing music that is being picked up and you can level the audio here to mute our microphone or desktop audio. We click this little button next to the mixer and to lower the volume, you can click and drag this. The final step here is that you'll want to click the cogwheel in the top right of the audio sources. Again, open the advanced settings and on the right, you'll see audio monitoring. Now, this will really help you when it comes to listening back to your own audio. If it says monitor off, it means you can't hear this source through your headphones, but your viewers can. Monitor only means you can only hear it. And then monitor and output means that you are transmitting as well as listening back to it in your headphones. Remember though, if you monitor only your mic to listen back to, but your desktop audio is set to monitor off, then you'll transmit that audio from your mic because you can hear it and that is being picked up by your desktop audio. If you want a full deep dive into audio and getting everything set up, I have a video. It is again linked in that playlist called how to make any microphone sound better. I cover leveling as well as a deep dive into filters that you will need to have on your microphone. But for now, the most important thing you can do is give yourself a pat on the back because congratulations, the basic Streamlabs OBS setup is done and you are able to start streaming like a pro or kind of like a medium level pro. I really recommend checking out that playlist and please comment down below. Oh snap, if you managed to watch all the way to the end of this video, I hope it helped you guys and I'll see you next time.